Hey everyone, and welcome to the Grow Hemp series. Today, we'll be making feminized autoflower seeds with a single female autoflower plant. Today, we'll be covering a autoflowering plant that we converted into a hermaphrodite plant. And this plant was talked about a little bit in the previous grow log, where we made feminized seeds with two hemp plants. Just like before, we have a seed in a fabric pot filled with Fox Farm Ocean Forest potting mix. And this allows me to water all of these plants with just plain old water I had for about a month hemp or so. Plant. So the now plant we is know located that making in hemp a seeds three with by three by six hemp feet plant grow tent that with two other plants. So now we know that plants making hemp seeds and while the previous grow log covered the autoflowering plant that was designated to just produce seeds, this is the plant that's designated to be a fully converted hermaphrodite plant to produce as much pollen as possible to pollinate the first plant. And the third plant on the side is the one that I'm only converting half of it to a hermaphrodite so that it can pollinate itself to showcase how to make feminized autoflowering seeds with only one female plant. The grow tent this plant is located in is actually enclosed again by an uninsulated shed to shelter everything and make sure the electronics don't get damaged by rain and stuff. And to round out the rest of the grow supplies, there's a clip-on grow light on the side of the tent, an inline fan to exhaust the air outside, and a LED full-spectrum grow light. Autoflowering plants flower on their own timeline. And because I know that this strain flowers really quickly from previous experience, I'm going to start spraying it with colloidal silver early on. And from this point forward, I'm doing it once a day, every day. I try to spray right before or when the lights are already out, since this is an auto flowering plant. So if I spray this in the dark and some light leak gets in, it doesn't matter. And I kept up the spray regimen daily, all the way until to the point where I can see some of the pollen sacs have started to open up. Other than that, I'm just watering the plant every time the soil gets dry, and really, there's not much else happening to this plant, or this grow tent for that matter, that I haven't already covered in the previous grow log. So we can just fast forward it until the pollen sacs start to develop. I also took two angles of footage for this plant. And here I'm going to focus on the camera that shows this one side stem since it's a good close up look of how a hermaphrodite plant should look like if the colloidal silver spray is successful. Some of the pollen sacs have started to open on the plant. And you can see down here a little bit spilling out. And although it's not nearly as much as what a male plant would produce, just having a visual cue of a batch of pollen coming from a hermaphrodite plant is great news. 
since that means the plant isn't producing only pollen sacs with blanks in them. At the same time, there's also some female buds in between the pollen sacs, as seen from the white hairs. And usually there's not this many white hairs. So I was kind of curious at this point if there were enough buds on the plants left to be able to pollinate itself and produce seeds. A quick close-up look at the main top stem really showcases the mixture between large pollen sacs. The banana-shaped stamen, which is basically a pollen sac without its outer shell, and some female buds in between. You can also see a close-up visual of some of the pollen that's spilled over onto a fan leaf. The leaves are starting to yellow pretty fast, which means that the nutrients in the soil have ran out. So I started to feed the plant with a liquid nutrient fertilizer for the rest of the grow. And usually by this point, once all of the pollen sacs have opened up, I would have discarded this plant since it's already done its job. But with this many buds also growing from this plant, I kept it in the tent for another month to see if the plant can actually produce any feminized autoflowering seeds. And nothing really happens to this plant in the final month. So I'll just fast forward this time lapse a little bit. Here's the plant outside of the shed a month later. I'm cutting off each stem instead of cutting the entire plant down since I don't want to disturb the plant that much as it'll just get pollen all over the place. And you can see here just how much pollen even a small bit of the plant can produce if disturbed. And yeah, while cutting this down, I found some fully developed seeds in the buds. So I'm pretty excited to try and dry and harvest this plant. The issue now is where to dry this, because I can't bring it indoors for obvious reasons. And I also can't place it back in the original tent like I did the first plant because there's still a plant growing in there that's starting to produce its own pollen to pollinate itself. And I want to try and prevent as much cross-pollination as possible since that plant strain is so different from this one and the one from the previous grow log. So what I'm doing is just drying this outdoors on some rocks and at the risk of germinating any of the seeds in the buds, I'm misting all sides of the stems with water to try and negate any of the pollen that's left on the stems. And this worked pretty well as it didn't cause any of the seeds in the buds to germinate and the pollen didn't just pour out anymore each time I handled the stems afterwards. So I should have just done this earlier before I moved the plant out of the shed.
This was really quick to dry since I left it outdoors under the sun. And a week later, it looked like it was dry enough to harvest, so let's give it a try. I'm just rubbing the plant material together with some gloves, which broke apart almost all of the seeds out of the buds that they were stored in. And then after that, I'm just sorting it by hand to remove the seeds from the plant material. In the end, the plant produced over a hundred autoflowering feminized seeds, which is great considering its size and the fact that the plant also did double duty by making a ton of pollen, which helped pollinate the other plant next to this one. And that's it. We'll be covering how to make a hermaphrodite plant with silver thiosulfate in the next scroll log. And that's it. Like the content? Then be sure to check out our beginner's guide to creating CBD products from scratch. Available at Amazon in print and digital with links in the description below. You can also find us at hempinapot.com.